So I thought I'd make this video to explain what regen braking is because there's this um, misunderstanding when people are looking at EVs for the first time and assume that regen braking has got something to do with the braking system but it doesn't. So all electric vehicles you drive them like an automatic and this Renault Zoe for example even has a traditional automatic gear shift uh, to make it all familiar but there's no gearboxes with electric vehicles so this is little more than a switch in reality. So with an electric vehicle when you touch the accelerator all you're doing is putting electricity into the motor which in this case you're driving the front wheels and you go forward. As soon as you lift off that uh, accelerator you're not putting electricity into that motor anymore but that motor is still spinning because it's directly connected to your front wheels and straight away that motor then starts generating electricity because it effectively turns into a, a, a dynamo or a generator and that's what regen braking is it's regenerative braking and you're transferring your kinetic energy going forward back into electricity back into the battery pack so as soon as you lift off the accelerator you're coasting and you're charging the car as you coast and you're, the car's naturally coming to a stop. Uh, it's very similar to engine braking in a car, um, but it of course isn't on the brakes, it's all on the electric motor. And what this means is if you drive an EV properly and efficiently, you use that to slow the car down because all the time you're getting some charge back. If you go from the accelerator to the brakes, you're just throwing away that potential energy you could have harvested. There's no point um, applying the brakes when you don't need to because you're transferring your kinetic energy into friction and heat to slow the car down, whereas you could have just let the battery, sorry, you could have let the uh, motor slow you down and put that energy back into the battery pack and that extends your range. However, obviously, if you've got to do an emergency stop, then you do hit the brakes. Um, but you, what you're doing in EVs, you read the road ahead a bit more and as you're coming up to a corner or roundabout or traffic lights, you lift off the accelerator sooner, let the electric motor slow you down as you're coasting because you're putting the energy back and you only touch the brakes when you really need to. In some cars that works better than others because you have different levels of regen. So on a Renault Zoe here, you don't have any adjustable um, regen. So you just put it into drive and that's all you've got. Well, it, it, it is adjustable to a fashion, but they've made the Renault Zoe's drive like a petrol car, really. They made it all very familiar, so it's nice and easy to drive. The only downside is you can't really control the regen very much. On these, the regen is actually controlled by the brake pedal. So when you touch the brake pedal, that first bit of travel on the brake pedal actually increases the motor regen rather than putting the brakes on and then if you uh, push it even more it then starts applying the brakes however to make it even more complicated that changes whether you're going above 40 miles an hour or below 40 miles an hour so if you're doing high speed touch the brake pedal it increases the regen um, but below 40 miles an hour you're just getting braking so it's a bit complicated in reality though as a driver if you don't understand what's going on you just drive it like a normal car uh, but the display does show you um, when you're regening and how much regening you're getting back. So cars like this BMW i3 again doesn't have any adjustment on the regen but whereas the Zoe gives you almost no regen or very light regen the BMW i3 gives you maximum regen and it is really nice. Any electric car owner that's got used to the EV that's one of the things they like is strong regen. So on the i3 here when you lift off the accelerator the car slows down very quickly, gives you maximum regen, putting the maximum amount back in the battery pack and it does come to a complete standstill, it's really nice. It does take a bit of getting used to because it does slow down a bit quicker than you might want to, so what you actually do is you don't take your foot fully off the accelerator, you gradually take your foot off the accelerator to slow down and that takes some getting used to because that's, you just don't do that with other cars. Um, but what it means is if you drive them properly and drive them efficiently you just never touch the brakes. Um, I can do really long trips in this car and I'll never ever touch the foot brake. That does mean your brakes are probably going to last the life of the car which is great but it's just a really nice way to drive and people that have got used to uh, driving EVs do all really like the regen. In many of the vans, well certainly in the, all the Kangoo vans and the Citroen Berlingo and Peugeot Partner vans, again they do not give you any adjustment on the regen 
but they've set it up to have maximum regen, a bit like a BMW i3, and it's a really nice feature. The only one that's different is the Nissan ENV200, and they give you a B mode, and uh, even in uh, braking mode, the, the one level of adjustment is still not as strong as the standard setup in a uh, Kangoo van. So I think with the Kangoos, well, with the Kangoos and the uh, the Peugeot and the Citroen, they give you maximum regen on the assumption there's going to be a load in the back. But it's uh, a very nice feature and something you very quickly get used to, as I said. So on some cars, you get quite a lot of a level of adjustment on your regen. For example, on a Mitsubishi Outlander, you have flappy paddles on the back of the steering wheel, and I'm pretty sure from memory there were five levels of regen. Um, however, we're sat here in a Nissan Leaf, obviously, so the Nissan Leafs have always had a B mode, and that's one level of uh, regen. So when you're driving, you toggle it into D, and we're in normal drive, and that gives you very light regen. So when you lift off the accelerator, um, it doesn't slow down so much, and you coast a bit quicker, and not much is coming into the battery pack. But you can put it into B mode, toggle it down again, we're now in B mode, and B mode is extra braking, it's braking mode, so that just turns the regen up. So the way you do that, if you want to drive efficiently, is you drive in D, and as you're coming up to a corner, you lift off the accelerator and you're coasting and slowing down a little bit, but if you feel like you're going, you need to go for the brakes because you're not slowing down enough, you toggle it into B mode. That gives you maximum regen, so maximum amount is going into the battery and then you're slowing down on that without touching the brakes. Obviously, if you're still not slowing down enough or you need to touch the brakes, then fine, you touch the brakes. But if you can drive like that and toggle it in and out of D and B and just use it as a, a, a brake before the foot brake, then that's it. That's driving at its most efficiently. Uh, some people leave it in B all the time, which are fine. again, if you're used to it, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. However, uh, particularly new EV drivers, if you leave it in B all the time, you don't actually get the best benefit of it because what it, in reality what happens is you lift off the accelerator and you're not used to it. So it slows down quicker, more than you'd expect, and you've only got to accelerate back out. And accelerating out of uh, to get your speed back up will always use a lot more than what you've ever gained. By, uh, on the regen and getting some back in the battery pack so it ends up overall being less efficient. So um, we're sat here in a 40 kilowatt hour leaf, the new model, and they've now introduced the e-pedal. And the e-pedal, and you turn it on, it tells you here on the dash we've got it on, that's just uh, regen braking turned to the max. Um, it's nothing special uh, Nissan did a very good marketing job with it and they gave it a new name e-pedal all it really is you know they could have just done a b times two here and given you another position really you know they branded it as one pedal driving it's nothing new they weren't the first doing that you know the BMW is one pedal driving the Renault Kangoo's are one pedal driving um, however it is turned to the max on a on a leaf it is very nice. Once you get used to it, it's very nice. And with the e-pedal on, it really comes to a stop very quickly. Um, and it comes to a complete stop, so it does actually put the friction brakes on as well. Uh, the BMW i3 will come to a stop, but at that last little bit, it, if the gradient on the road is, isn't um, it, it's slightly downhill, it will just keep rolling. Whereas on the um, Leaf, it comes to a complete stop. If your foot is off the accelerator, it will hold the brakes and won't move. Um, so yeah, it's very similar to an i3. Uh, it's just an i3 plus a little bit really, but really nice system. Um, but the point of this video really is just to explain e-pedal is not nothing new. It's just another level of adjustable regen. I hope you found that video useful or, or maybe someone might find it useful. Um, if you've got any questions, then put them in the comments below and I'll answer them. And if you like this video, then please do click the little thumbs up icon on YouTube because that helps other people find the video. And uh, if you're interested, then you could subscribe to the channel. I've got lots of different videos on EVs you might find useful.